we concluded the previous lesson with an introduction about pollination. It's simply the process in which pollen grains from the anther are transferred to the stigma of the same flower or, for that matter, stigma of any other flower. So do you think that the definition is trying to give us a hint that pollination is of different types? Yes, that's correct. The fact that pollination can occur in the same flower or can involve two different flowers of the same or different plants gets us to the types of pollination. Let's understand the types using an example. Let's take a single plant which has these beautiful flowers. Now imagine one case where the pollen grains from this flower are transferred to the stigma of the same flower. The second case is where the pollen grains from this flower are transferred to the stigma of another flower, say this flower belonging to the same plant. This type where the pollination occurs in the same flower or between different flowers of the same plant is called as self-pollination. It is the type that involves a single flower or the flowers of the same plant. Now imagine the transfer of pollen grains occurring between this flower and another flower found on a different plant. This pollination is called as cross-pollination. This means where the pollen grains travel from the anther to the stigma of a flower present on a different plant. So we have self-pollination which involves a single flower or different flowers of the same plant and we also have cross-pollination that involves two flowers present on different plants. Now tell me one thing, we are saying that pollination is the transfer of pollen grains. But who brings about the transfer? I mean, who will carry out the translocation of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same or different flowers? There are special agents that carry out the transfer. These are called as pollinating agents. Non-living factors like wind or water carry out pollination in many cases. These are called as the abiotic agents of pollination. Similarly, living organisms like honeybees, butterflies, birds or others that feed on flower nectar are also responsible for pollination. Such agents are included in the category of biotic agents of pollination. Now that we've learnt about the typical structure of a flower as well as the process of pollination, let's find out what happens after pollination is successfully carried out. Next, let's look at the process of fertilization in detail.